Right, now I know I said in the last episode that we are going to rebuild this outpost. Um, and after a few test attempts at doing this, uh, I've found it's a lot harder than we thought it was. I also decided to go back and revisit a little bit about the lore that you guys came up with in terms of us living in the rabbit warren. And when I thought about it, it ultimately leans into a faction that lives underground, thrives underground, and although this makes it a lot more of a challenge for me as a player, um, it leans towards a whole lot more in terms of protection, safety, and I wouldn't say efficiency, but it does give us more challenges and Space Engineers is a game that becomes more fun with the more challenges that you give yourself. So I think we're going to lean right into uh, being members or being a, yeah, someone that's come from the Rabbit Warren, which at the moment is very much just a small mining outpost that we want to expand into a large network. So I think as much as I would love to start living on top of the ground i don't think now is the time for us to show ourselves to the world um so there's that on top of that there's also right beneath this outpost uh some very useful resources that i would like to claim and well yes i could mine them manually by hand or do it with a drill ship myself i'd much rather have something automated just dig it up for me um, in terms of a position for a base, there are another great bunch of resources just under our feet here. Um, you know, magnesium being the main one that we need for our defenses. We've got silicon, lots of magnesium, some silver and some gold. So there are some definitely some really key resources here. Uh, we are still going to need to find a new site for uh, Cobalt over this way somewhere, but I don't think that's going to be a major issue. So, this episode is still going to be building up a production base. It's just not going to be rebuilding this one. Um, I know from my test attempts at making this episode that this takes well over 12 hours just to kind of get semi-functional again. Um, it's a lot to cram into one video and I just, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm not feeling it. I, I couldn't get the pacing right when I was editing it. So we're gonna, we're gonna scrap it instead. That, that is what we're doing. Um, and then before we scrap it though, we're going to start building outposts so that we can use this place as a, uh, we've built up on here a connector so we can use it to refuel our ship. And recharge it while we're over here so the honey badger can be refueled uh, from what's left of this outpost and a few blocks that we've added to kind of keep it functional um, so yeah that's the plan uh, to get started I suppose I need to uh, dig a hole damn it uh, actually let's let's scrap some stuff also, if you're wondering, we are now on uh, tier 3 tools, so in between episodes, um, I got a bit of a combat high and I went around and uh, attacked a few other outposts, uh, footage should be on screen at the moment, and uh, so based on that, we were able to find some platinum uh, that became, that's been really, really useful. So where do we want to place this? If we have a quick look, that mountain goes up quite a ways. So I think somewhere about here, uh, we want to go to, so that's local align free placement. I just want to change the angle. I think we're going to go that way. We're going to make an entrance about... How many blocks wide is that? Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Is 
that's eight seven so we're going to make an entrance about seven wide for now um and then we will carve out an entrance for each drone respectively uh, i think that's going to be the easiest way to do this and for those of you that have watched uh previous episodes in this reboot series you'll know why i'm placing the blocks it's purely so i can line up uh the welding ship or not the welding ship the drill ship to keep a nice straight uh drilling line so we'll jump to the drill ship and uh i'll get drilling out a nice little hole this will mainly be our access point um i won't set any of the drones to use this access point this will be for us whatever ship we're currently piloting and uh maybe a rover or two that we're driving around in that's all i intend to come in this entryway and then we'll make nice tidier smaller little kind of entry and exit ways for the drones right so i kind of wanted to take you guys through why a lot of my stuff that we're building is blueprints um i like to play around with my builds and make sure they're going to work before i throw them into survival um this is my build design world and it is full of a whole bunch of kind of random stuff that i would really love to get into the series it's more ideas i had um most of these i can't claim to own the original designs i saw something i liked and i wanted to modify it to match uh what i you know to match something that i want to do um that's why i've got that blueprint over in the background uh, i want to try and utilize some of its um its, its ability to pick up and put down cargo containers so we'll do a quick run over here uh oh can't turn hydrogen off so this is a really cool system where we can turn our hut on trigger arm and the arm will extend out and line up the cargo container hit the next button which will switch the connector from the arm to lock it to the cargo container next button undoes the merge block on the bottom and then you trigger the arm and it picks it up and loads it into the um onto the vehicle now i want to use something similar to that on our mobile drill rigs and it's half the reason why this episode's taken so long is i wanted to know exactly what it was that i'd be bringing back into our um production plant so this here is what i've been playing around with so this is uh, essentially what's in that crate just with hydrogen tanks instead this is the the fully polished and cleaned product the end result of i don't even want to take a guess at how many hours i've spent building this thing um but essentially what it's going to be is the screen here using a programmable block inside we will display the total sum of the one two three four five six hydrogen containers that we've got in here so we can see a total percentage uh we'll also output kind of the charge level of this because it's got two large batteries a bunch of smaller batteries uh, i managed to cram in a bunch of action relays um, but this is what we're going to be using to transport our hydrogen around i haven't quite finalized the look for the cargo container version the cargo container version is going to be a little more complicated in that it requires sorters um it, yeah it's going to require sorters for me to have it do what i want it to do so i want the cargo container ones to only fill up with one kind of ingot and then they only get retrieved when all cargo containers are filled up with that type of ingot ready to come back to base unless i really need it then i can send a drone to pick it up in terms of transportation these have been set up with uh, merge blocks on the top for picking them up uh, also if we need to access them there is some um, uh, small connectors on the top that we can use to connect on to uh, at the base at some point 
and then for once it's on the drill rig it will be connectors on the bottom now why did i go for this particular size so when i was laying this out i wanted it to be comparable to a large hydrogen tank um, so one of these is just short of a quarter of the storage of one large hydrogen tank um, and that is because once i get it onto the drill rig it, then that's what i've been planning for is this is kind of roughly the size that the base of our drill rig is um, i wanted it to be able to slot in and only take up about the same amount of space as the large hydrogen container which it does the fun part is then the mechanisms for loading and unloading that it might take up a bit more space so um i'm gonna keep playing around with that one kind of off camera okay back to the scheduled broadcast um we now see the kind of issue with uh time lapsing and drilling with your hut off uh, i ran out of hydrogen and realized at this point that there is no reverse thrust on this ship without hydrogen thrusters so um yeah no this this was quite fun trying to make my way back to the base um to try and dock this or not to the base but to the outpost that we destroyed last episode to to try and dock up and uh see if we can get some hydrogen Right, we've got ourselves in a little bit of a pickle. Uh, when I did my... Uh, when I did the setup for here, I forgot to make sure that this line was connected in with our connectors. There's no hydrogen for our ship. Let's just turn our thrusters off so we're not burning power. Um, also, I've realized I don't have any reverse thrust without hydrogen. Um, I don't know how that I overlooked that, but I did. So we're going to see if we can salvage enough parts from this base to get our conveyor line welded up. What do we need? Interior plate. All right, that's everything we need to get that going again, which is nice. Uh, we'll let our ship fuel up for a bit. We'll take down our steel plates and we'll start kind of laying out a floor plan. So... What I've decided to do, because originally I was just going to drill straight, but that was only going to leave us 20 meters of voxel. Now this up top area, we probably will still end up using it as a spot where we can park our ships and then like uh, park the honey badger whenever we come over and then um, have an access point down. Uh, but the main base is going to be down here. And I'll probably end up actually just drilling out that top area because we're going to need, um, like, I want this to feel like it is a warehouse in absolutely massive space, but it is underground and safe. So that is why the angle, and I'll probably keep it small for a little bit. I won't go too high to where at least here. The reason being, I can't see the entryway anymore. Um, I'll go wider, but I won't go higher. And I think that's, that's the current plan. So we're going to fill in the floor a little bit, just with, uh, steel, uh, light armor blocks for now. It, it's probably not the end floor that it's going to be, but it's, I've got the resources for it. So we're going to do that. I'm going to do some filling in and we'll bring you back in a bit. Right. Uh, got the kind of entryway drilled out and a little bit of kind of detailing done. I know it's been a pet peeve for a few of my viewers so far that uh, I've been leaving a lot of stuff kind of in an unfinished state. Um, so working on improving that in this episode and from here on out. So yeah, this is, this is going to be purely entryway, um, a lot of the drones will take exits kind of off to each side and I intend to keep it one exit per one drone uh, just so that we're not going to be whoa, low on energy. So just so we're not going to be kind of worried about overfilling our... Um, what is the word I'm looking for? So we're not worried about... Um, fighting over airspace because that is another thing i'm worried about 
Um, the other thing I'm interested in having a look at doing is the potential of having some form of rover drone. Now, I don't know, like, I know they don't work very well in space engineers. Rovers as drones have not really been a thing. Maybe we could make a train instead um, for the, uh, the, uh, what have, I, what have I called them? The cargo units, stackable cargo units. Um, maybe we use a train system or something like that uh, to move those back and forwards. Um, let me know which one you'd prefer to see in the comments, whether we try to, like I've seen some janky ways to turn uh, rovers into hovercrafts and uh, that works, or whether you'd prefer we make some kind of monorail uh, that comes back and forth and ferries those in. Um, yeah, let me know in the comments. Right, so at this point is where, at this depth here, is where we're going to open up into our really large um, distribution hub. Um, and I want to keep a lot of this kind of main area free for now because I eventually want to make this thing look like it is alive with all the different functions we've got with it, picking stuff up, moving it around, uh, the drones coming in and out. I want that visible. And then um, probably below us under uh, something like, under something like catwalks, and uh, with some places where you can go up and look down is probably where I'll put all the different storages. I think that's going to be the plan. Um, and I think for this, we are going to aim for a storage for every kind of ore. Um, every, yeah, so every kind of ore for ice. Uh, one, a different storage for every ingot. I don't think, and I'm not going to do a different storage for every component. Components are all going to go into one. But I think for us planning for the scale of this series, I think that's what we're going to need to do. If we want, don't want to have to come down here and cannibalize it and change it up too much. So I'm going to go get some energy. We're going to do some more drilling. Um, and once I've got a bit of a room formed in here, I will bring you back. What else have we done? Oh, yes, this one. So this here was inspired by the fact that uh, you guys have given us a name for the carrier ship for our drones. And I really wanted to, uh, you know, I, I, I saw the idea that we were going to call the carrier, the drone carrier, maybe the porcupine, and then have a fighter or a fighter drone called the manticore. Um... So originally I was designing this to be um, the new drones for the, uh, to go on the porcupine, but it ended up being a little bit bigger than I intended it to be. Um, so this is probably going to end up being the manticore. I, I went a little overboard. Like when I've got inspiration and I've got a good name to run with, uh, I will really run with it. And, and this thing's kind of cool in that you can do 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 I think it's that one don't know if I fixed up the clang on this one but you can fold its wings in and out so I was planning that if I could fold its wings in for storage and I think this is the one that I haven't fixed up clang so it's going to start spinning yep um the yeah I gotta do I gotta do some work on this particular one I'd have I did have another edition of it somewhere um, where I had fixed it up, um, where the wings could be completely upwards, and then I was thinking, I was playing around with this either being called uh, the quill, you know, I was trying to make it as uh, pointed and spike-like as possible, so it could be the spine, the quill, or something along those lines. Um, I'm not great at naming, so I'll leave that up to you guys, but this was another kind of thing I've been playing around with, 
Um, because I, yeah, I really do like the idea of having moving parts. Yes, it makes the world a heck of a lot more complicated, but it makes it so much more fun. Um, and then finally, because you gave our carrier ship a name, I wanted to then make a carrier that is worthy of that name. Um, so here is just a base frame of the rover. Uh, I've also built this up inside our survival world ready for us, the next version of it. Um, and a lot of this is playing around with just making sure we've got enough. What is the word I'm looking for? Um, I, I wanted this thing to be fairly resilient, like a porcupine is. Um, I wanted it to be able to climb over almost any terrain. Um, and I've got some footage that I can chuck up now where I can show that this thing can climb mountains in its base state. Uh, so yeah, it, it, I wanted to do play around and actually do some engineering to make something that was going to be worthy of the names that you guys are giving me. Because um, I'm also aware that a lot of what I've been doing has kind of been... I haven't been doing it to a... Like, I haven't been making it satisfying. I've just been making it to, for the sake of making it. So... Um, I wanted to improve on that and uh, this is kind of what I've started but what I've been playing around with in the background it does take a heck of a lot of time to design this stuff but I thought you know rather than completely cutting out um, and, and just welding up these blueprints later on I wanted to bring you along on the journey um, and if you're interested in a little more of how I put these together, I could maybe throw together some mini series of, um, they won't kind of be in line with what we're doing with the episodes, because most of the time when I'm building this, it's just whenever inspiration strikes, I'll jump into one of my build design worlds, I think I've got like eight of them now, and uh, start building something. Alright, and with the magic of editing and my sanity and the many many hours uh it took we now have a hole a very big hole it might seem like it is unnecessarily big but let, let's take a think about this this is going to be the distribution hub for everything so anything that we mine comes here anything that um uh, you know, all our main hydrogen storage is going to be here. This is where we are going to be calling for refuel for our main base, for any of our ships that are out. Uh, this is uh, where we will be sending uh, ammo back to. This is where, like, this is the most important kind of base we are going to build. And it is going to serve us for as long as we're on this planet potentially even after we've left the planet because we can program the drones to come and find us um yeah we can program the drones to follow moving vehicles so if we've got a, a ship that we're flying around in space and we can have the drones bring the resources from here to us in space as long as we build them to be space worthy drones uh but yes, it is a big hole. Uh, we need to be a little strategic about how we plan the space. So what I'm thinking is everything at the height that we are at and above belongs to the drones. Anything below this height belongs to um, kind of gantry canes and uh, sorter systems and all that good stuff. Uh I think what we're going to do um, is we'll probably end up starting with the sorter system down on the ground. I'm going to need to bring back a heck of a lot more resources for that. But um, yeah, I, and then on top of that, I also would like to build a ramp down before I do anything else, just so that I'm ready for my own stupid mistakes. Uh, like running out of hydrogen at the bottom of the hole. And uh, it's been done before. I promise you. Oh, if I if I don't have to 
see a mining ship again it'll be too soon i love the honey badger but i i i, I i'm done with mining for a while and saying that we've got to do the same thing for the main base that's the other nice thing is we've managed to come down far enough that the weather system doesn't affect us um yeah and i feel like the way the entrance is is currently set up i feel like it, it works uh it makes me feel like um yeah it feels like you're entering a grand under area and then that's what i want i want amazement once you get to here so I, I'm, I'm thinking of putting some doors in here um that you have to open to be able to get inside and uh yeah once the doors open i want shock and awe but yeah we're gonna go grab some resources so that we can uh start building in this massive hole um and we're gonna try and guesstimate um roughly the zones that i want things to go in like i for now i want to keep these walls clear on this side because this is where we'll be making the exits for the drones um and uh potentially out the side wall a couple of on the closest side depending on how many drones we are going to have um we've got enough room for production we're going to pick one side of this to Probably the back wall over there is going to be a mess of refineries. Um, and then we're going to put all of the conveyor lines. Uh, I kind of want them inside and I kind of don't. Um, I think we're going to go convoluted spaghetti for the conveyors in here. Uh, just so that... Oh, 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 oh. oh God, I've got an auto run button. I push Q. I auto run. Um, but yeah, so we're going to go back and take the, what is it called? We're going to take the honey badger back to base, uh, load up on a whole bunch of steel plates, uh, construction comp, just all the resources we need to place the base frame, uh, because we will not be welding this stuff up by hand. I, I refuse. Right at this point, you will have seen kind of some of the teaser stuff that we have brought up. I'm not sure around about where I put it in the video, but I know I put it in the video before now. Um, so we have the new base frame for the porcupine sitting down there. Um, it is a lot more, it is a lot bigger than the original porcupine was. Uh which means that yeah it, it's going to fit a larger drone uh than the ones that we originally designed um if we aim to have at least 10 of them on here uh this thing should be able to handle it uh, a lot of the design and i probably would have talked about this in the other video at this point but a lot of the design is based on keeping as many wheels as possible on the ground um so these front wheels have a rotor that allows them to tilt forwards and backwards based on whatever the ground's doing uh, so that it doesn't spring up too quickly. We have placed in um, some one by one wheel suspensions and to kind of dampen the uh, how aggressive the bouncing can be on that piston. Um, and we've done that all the way around. The only difference is where the three wheels are, the rotor is off center because they require two blocks. Um, yeah, uh, it, that, that part pisses me off, but it is what it is. Um, and then everything is just using a script by whip out see if i can land up here so we're using a script called that's by patrick harrison there you go um i think this is whips uh subgrid wheel control i 
a subgrid wheel controller. Okay, so it's not whip. It is uh, Patrick Hansen. Um, you can find him on YouTube. Uh, it's a great little script, and it's allowing us to control wheels that we wouldn't normally be able to. So normally anything that's on the other side of a... Oh, wow, I wasn't talking into my mic. Normally anything that's on the other side of a rotor, a hinge, a connector... No, even a connector I can't do in this system. Um, but on the other side of a rotor or a hinge um, is counted as a subgrid and in a normal cockpit you won't be able to control them. Um, by using scripts we can then tell the uh, we're telling the cockpit that it has access to them and it's just you know it just goes through and adds every wheel whether it's on subgrid or not into the main control group which makes life easy. The only downside is it doesn't add the parking brake. So I've can't I've like I've forgotten at this point how to add a parking brake onto this. Um like we could do a really cheap, easy, and nasty parking brake and just put a landing gear uh on a piston that we push down into the ground. Um that could work that would work really well actually for a parking brake. That would work better than even the standard parking brake. Um but yeah, we've got this uh sitting on base ready for a build um so yeah at the moment it's just the subframe everything here is to allow the wheels what the the front i suppose i suppose i've set this up with axles haven't i um so the axles can roll and they can uh tilt so roll is as in roll this way tilt as in this way um and uh had some fun making some custom suspension for this um if you're interested i will put a link to the video um of the guy who gives the best advice about building custom uh custom suspensions for your rovers but for now this is what we're going to use as the base frame for our porcupine when we get back around to it um what were we doing ah components i it even forgot to put them on production let's just see what we've got available on this base i can't pull them from here to hide empty oh we've got a few components and a decent amount of ingots available on this base as it is we're running low on cobalt though i notice um but yes, oh, a little bit of gold and platinum left. Um, hmm. There's a lot of ores here that need to be offloaded uh, to a proper base with some decent production. Like, we are running a tier 3 refinery, which admittedly is better than a vanilla refinery um with upgrade modules so we are already processing faster than a normal playthrough would but um you know i would like to have a refinery per resource and some kind of system to allow overflow and i think i'm gonna have to script that um or a system that allows us to, to to change what different refineries are doing based on demand. It's going to be a lot harder because we've got the better stone mod. So there's a lot more resources that we can capture. Um, and I'm not sure how I'm going to categorize those in the sorting system yet. Whether or not I'm going to have to potentially just have a cargo container for all. And then allow them to be sorted through either or the gold yeah yeah so if, if it's got magnesium in it but it's mixed with something else it can go through a refinery um that you know so i'm going to have the base refineries one for iron nickel silicon um cobalt gold silver platinum uranium that means eight refineries Actually, platinum uranium can go through the same one because I don't imagine I'm going to have a absolute crap ton on this planet.
gold and silver can share a refinery. The other ones we will split out. Uh, gold and silver can have their own. Anyway, um, I think I can make the connector in the center here able to uh, share resources. So we're going to go dock over there. Right. Uh, we've got everything we need, and I definitely got them from that connector and uh, not any other way. Uh, we, we won't talk about that. Uh, we'll head back, and I'll bring you back once we're actually in the cave, because traveling time is unneeded. Now, it's at this point where I decided to cut a lot of footage. Uh, there's a lot of time spent placing blocks and we're going to chuck in different angles and different shots of different parts of that but the main part of what i'm trying to do here is i don't really have a solid plan as of yet of exactly how this base is going to come together so in order to try and help myself uh, get some better ideas i wanted to establish some form of design language um you know some some staple kind of design elements that would be reused throughout the rest of the the build um and by doing this it also helps to uh you know that I'm, I'm fleshing out a lot more than i would have intended uh for the initial build of this i kind of wanted to build this in stages um but i i didn't really know exactly where i was going to place stuff inside uh the space so a lot of this is uh me working it out and uh it it, it took hours um but I, it really i really wanted to incorporate this into this episode and get this part out of the way because this is a really key component for us actually getting to the point of being able to properly automate this series um so yeah enjoy the only kind of real design prompt I had in my head as I was putting together the majority of this was it needs to feel big, it needs to feel industrial, it needs to be able to make, uh, to, to take the uh, rovers that I'd love to be able to have in here as well as the drones, some gantry cranes, I want it to feel like these, this space is going to be alive. This, this is all I've got in my head as I'm putting a lot of this together. Right, I don't know if you can tell, but a bit of time has passed uh, building this thing up. So, I've got a bit of a better idea of how this thing is going to go together. Uh, the centerpiece directly underneath our entryway. So, here's our entryway. This area here is going to be command and ops center where we can manage everything. Uh, directly beneath where the drone port is is where the drone dock is going to be uh with a kind of area where we can uh maintain uh whatever drone is working in that area which means this next one over is going to come straight down into that dock next one over is going to come straight down into that dock and the final one will come out and into that dock so we can get four ships docked um oh, out to that herb. You'll see I went uh, for a lot of kind of structural stability. It's not something required in Space Engineers, but once, you know, a lot of what I was doing, I was trying to establish some kind of design language for the space. Um, and I just kind of kept in mind that this is like an industrial kind of plant. I want it to be and feel like it's an industrial plant. And the easiest way to do that was to uh yeah continue providing as much support as we can right down to the ground so everything seems like it's anchored um in terms of our rovers rovers will come down here they're going to stay at this height i'm not going to go any lower for rovers uh than what we've got there uh and then everything un uh below will be for uh storing stuff and eventually we'll end up with a nice big uh shelving system in the center where we will stack our stackable uh cargo units and unload and reload them as we see fit 
ideally we don't actually um no do we unload them yeah we unload the ores ones here for sure uh we're gonna have to keep a uh yeah so we're gonna have to plan around that um in terms of getting this place functional so i don't really want to go too far into uh the future automation i just wanted to make sure there was space for the future automation in here um i i didn't want to make it so that we were limited um in terms of space by not planning properly which is why I, like generally typically for something like this i would build it in uh build it in creative and then use a blueprint um but then i also when i build in creative i tend to skip over a lot of the details um so there's that i'm also getting kind of sick of seeing the same gray right i think this is going to be our starter setup for this place so um maintaining the single uh pipeline or single conveyor line kind of system uh, we come down to here. Uh, so ships input. Well, ships connectors over there. We're coming down to a sorter, pushing into what's going to be for now just a complete all oars cargo container uh, out of there. Uh, we are going around to the refineries which have sorters for us to be able to choose what it is that they are refining uh out of the refineries we are coming into a sorter that's going to drain ingots um so that sort will be set to drain all just to keep the refineries clear which will push up back into this main line into a cargo container so the uh, sort of here won't be set to drain all it'll just be set to whitelist ingots and then we'll have a um uh, a timer block set up to uh, change that to drain all when we want it to um on the top here is going to be a, a one-way sorter that's pointing outwards this is just to stop anything that shouldn't be going into the ingot storage going into the ingot storage and then that is it that is i know i know this is a huge facility to just put a couple of really little things in here um but this is the starting point i kind of wanted to build this place in stages i really didn't want to build as much of it as we did today um but you know it happened um all right i made a mistake so i've got to take uh, the honey badger back home and fix the honey badger up i have done some major damage just by not paying attention and rushing things so <sighs> it looks like we've lost our cargo container which means all of our resources are now on the ground there in a container yes um let's take this thing back to the rabbit warren before we cause any major issues because we're gonna have to repair it and i don't have all the components to repair it anywhere but on the rabbit warren oh i wish i hadn't done that everything was going so well right with the honey badger back in a mostly repaired state i think that is a good time for us to call the episode we went through a whole bunch uh this episode uh you know there was a lot of highs a lot of lows um i got to tease you with a whole bunch of stuff that i've been working on in the background that i've been wanting to show off but we won't be able to get or we might not be able to get to for a little bit of time um but i don't think this episode would be fully finished without giving you just kind of one last look at a teaser all right just another kind of quick teaser on how the uh stackable cargo containers are going in terms of using them on a drill rig i have finally got it set up a system where they would be able to uh extend themselves out from the drill rig ready for pickup oh, that is Oh, 
obviously we would never do all four lit for at once because uh, we would also force the drill rig to stop put the drill into a certain um, make sure the, the drill head is in a certain position before we extend any of these or potentially actually we could extend all four and have the drill head in any of the kind of four corners um, and all this system is is uh, we've got a hinge on the bottom we have a double hinge kind of at the top well at the moment it's flat but this would be at the top of the arm and uh, I've used conveyor junctions for now just to set this up as a test these are the hydrogen containers so they don't require any sorters and they would probably end up putting some hydrogen storage permanent hydrogen storage for the ship in the center and finding some way to make that look nice I'm, like I'm leaning towards making the majority of the ship in small grid and then docking the top half onto it um, and that would travel separately uh, that might make things a little more stable but you know it, it does everything that I want it to so it, it puts the cargo contain well the, the hydrogen containers at this point out at a point where a drone or a gantry cane is able to latch on and uh, take them off the the mobile drill rig um, like at the moment these are attached through the emerge blocks I haven't attached the connectors yet but you know they're, they're in place and then after it's been restocked with a new one uh, you'd be able to you know the automation would trigger the reverse cycle it would bring them all back in to the center oh, that just looks freaking cool and once it's all back in uh, it would trigger a timer for about five seconds before the drill rig started moving again um, some changes I'm thinking of making is adding uh, some form of merge block to kind of lock these up or connect a lock them in place when they come back um, probably here would be where I'd put the connectors um, just so that they're not moving around they're not there for anything other than purely locking things in place when we don't need them to be moving around um, I still need to work out how this attaches to large grid the biggest problem I'm having is a design overlook from when I first made the stackable cargo container where these are an even amount of blocks um, not an odd amount of blocks so it's not going to line up perfectly with anything um, and I'm not sure yet how I'm going to get around that other than building this completely in small grid uh, I, I did some damage to that side as I was uh, trying to push it into the ground I also managed to damage the oh I don't know what, what I did to the manticore also managed to damage the manticore there it is that, that's how I did it I tried to push it in place and blew the gun off the center so um yeah this this rig is going to need a name uh very very soon because we, we we will be building this in our survival world um i've got a little bit of scripting left to do so that these screens display um exactly how much hydrogen is in the cargo containers that they're attached to not the cargo containers those are hydrogen uh tanks inside there um and i've got some programmable blocks inside the uh the stackable container or stackable h2 unit um plus two um large small grid batteries per uh hydrogen unit um so that they should be able to run their uh timer blocks and uh event controllers and uh, programmable blocks uh while they're in flight um and i think like the, the other thing I like about these this particular solution is it allows us to also use them in a uh, kind of like a train system if we decide to use trains um, or it allows us to use them with rovers if we decide to use rovers or they will work perfectly fine just with a uh, drone 
and why why would i build this instead of just using the typical cargo drone because typical cargo drones are easy this this is challenging this is engineering um the amount of time spent planning and building like the amount of time spent just building the stackable cargo containers let alone uh trying to figure out this system for loading and unloading them uh it, it took ages but it it was rewarding and then in terms of what's left to develop for this rig uh i need to finish off the actual doo -doo 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 -doo, where did i put him all the way back in this corner i need to figure finish off kind of the layout for the cargo version um i haven't quite figured that out yet uh i, I need to make some changes to this one uh where it may not line up exactly the same as the hydrogen one does just because i want to be able to use um sorters in and out of this uh for the pure fact that uh i need this thing to um unless i use a script to decide what it gets uh yeah and then i also need to figure out the design of what we're going to do around the cargo containers to make it look nice like i i it was easy to come up with the idea for the hydrogen uh storages because you know hydrogen tank um but yeah for the the cargo i am at a blank so if you've got any ideas let me know in the comments okay there was a whole lot more i wanted to try and cram into this episode but we are already well over the time that i promised i would try and keep my videos in at this point um if you enjoyed the video or if there's anything that you have suggestions for or would like to change let me know in the comments um and also if you made it this far you've obviously enjoyed the video so you might as well leave a like and smash that subscribe button um <laughs> anyway uh until next time i suppose stay safe look after yourself and peace guys oh uh <laughs>